الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ایو لحبت فی اللہ Let's listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which shows us the importance of ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all acts of worship. And it shows us also the importance of salat al-jama'ah, that the Muslim man should pray in congregational prayer as much as possible. And that it is an obligation. This is one of the ahadith which illustrate for us this very point. On Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة الرجل في جماعة تزيد على صلاته في بيته وصلاته في سوقه بدعا وعشرين درجة وذلك أن أهدهم إذا توضأ فأحسن الوضوء ثم أتى المسجد لا ينهز إلا الصلاة لا يريد إلا الصلاة لم يخطو خطوة إلا رفع له بها درجة وحط عنه, عنه بها خطية حتى يدخل, يدخل المسجد فإذا دخل المسجد كان في الصلاة ما كانت الصلاة هي تحبسه وملائكة يصلون على أهدكم إذا ما دام في مجلسه الذي صلى فيه يقولون اللهم ارحمه اللهم اغفر له اللهم توب عليه متفق عليه ان حديث ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال the prayer of one of you this is collected in bukhari and muslim the salat of a man in congregation increases it has more in, a greater reward and increase than his, than his prayer in his home and a prayer in the marketplace by 23 to 30 times in daraja in rank or level and that is because when a person when a, basically when this individual makes wudu and he makes a perfect wudu ablution for prayer and then he goes to the masjid and he does not leave it except to, in preparation for the prayer and he doesn't want anything except for that prayer that every step that he takes it will raise him in rank and remove from him or expiate uh, sins from him until he enters the masjid and if he enters the masjid and he is he is therefore in prayer as long as the prayer is the reason he is there in the masjid that's what keeps him in the masjid And the malaika, the angels, they will pray for him. They will pray for the person, for one of you. As long as he is sitting in the masjid, that he is uh, waiting for the prayer. And they will say, O oh, our Lord, O oh, Lord, have mercy upon him. O oh Lord, please forgive him. O oh Lord, accept his repentance. And this is in the this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Some of the benefits from this hadith, Ayyala Habitifillah, is this hadith illustrates for us the importance of praying salatul uh, praying the congregational prayer in the masjid. And another benefit of this hadith is that it also illustrates for istihbab wudu al rajul fi baytihi li shuhur al jama'a li ya'zam li ya'zam al ajr or ya'zam al ajr that it shows the that it is recommended for a man to make his wudu his ab ab ablution 
in his home before he goes to uh, make the, the, the prayer in congregation in order to receive greater reward because he'll be in wudu and it's if he's in prayer the whole time especially when he enters the masjid as long as his intention is for the salat and the third benefit is it also illustrates the importance of having your niyyah, your intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain this great reward and that whoever does not have their intention purely you know pure intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they're walking to the masjid and they've made this wudu and so forth then their ajr will be less their ajr their reward will be less another benefit of this hadith ayyullah habbati fillah is it illustrates for us also that the servant is on good as long as he is waiting for good. So here, as uh, the ulama mentioned a qaida, they say, al-wasail laha ahkam al-maqasid, that the hukum or the ruling of something is re directly related to the actions that lead up to it. So the means to something takes the same ruling as the thing you're trying to attain. So for example, in this example, you've prepared for salat with your intention to please Allah Azza wa Jalla and gain this great reward. You've walked to the masjid and you've entered the masjid in preparation for this prayer. And when you do this, all of this is a wasail, it's a wasila, or their wasail. They are means to the prayer. So they contain, they gain the same uh, hukum as the prayer. That they, and, and the same ruling as the prayer and the reward. So you're gaining reward for all of that. And this qaida also is pertinent to all acts of ibadah. And likewise, to acts of shar as well is evil. So for example, the person who has a car and your car is mubah, aslan, the car, your vehicle, has no uh, hukum shar'i attached to it. It's considered mubah, meaning it is, um, it's something lawful to use, but there's no reward in it and there's no harm in leaving it uh, and there's no harm in using it, etc. With all the different ahkam, the five ahkam, al-shar, al-wujub, al-mustahab, al makru al-mubah, wa haram. All of those ahkam, those five ahkam, ayyuhabati fillah, those are the ahkam al khamsa with regards to al uh, the hukum, the rulings per things. So the car, aslan, it has uh, no hukum, it, there's no hukum attached to it. But whenever you use that as a wasila, as a means to do haram, you've, you're going out on a date, or you're going to use it to steal from someone, or to do a drive-by, for example. You've got in the car, you've prepared yourself, you got your pistol, or you got your nine, or you got whatever you, you've prepared, your weapons, and you go in order to cause harm to people. Now, as soon as you've gotten in that car, all of those things and those, all that preparation are means to an evil end. So they're all evil. They all have the same ruling as, as far as evil. Or for example, the person who's prepared himself, he has a ladder and he uses the ladder to reach a window in order to break in and steal from people to do an evil act. This ladder now has moved from Mubah to Muharram. Why? Because it's a wasila to do haram. And this is what the ulama mean by al al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid. Ayyul habati fillah, a last benefit of this hadith that the Sharah said with regards to the hadith, I'm reading from Riyadh Salihin by Imam Nawawi, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and may Allah bless him with Jannah to Firdaus and all the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, that the explainer of, uh, of this uh, of this great book and this hadith 
He said, "I'lam akhi Muslim." He said, "No, my brother Muslim." Wafakak Allah. May Allah give you tawfiq. That salatul jama'a is fardul ayn ala kulli Muslim sami'a uh, nida wa laysa lahu udhr. He said that the the congregational prayer is an obligation on every single Muslim man that hears the adhan and does not have a legitimate excuse of maybe extreme sickness or perhaps in the case of traveling and they've already combined the prayer and this is another prayer's come in or something like this whether from Ahla Adhar or due to extreme rainy conditions, weather conditions, etc. And he says, وَأَدِّلَ وُجُوبِهَا كَثِيرًا And that there's many, many evidences in the Sharia that indicate that it is an obligation for the male Muslim to pray in the masjid, uh, especially if he hears the adhan. And from that is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فأقم فأقمت لهم الصلاة فلتقوم طائفة منهم معك In Surah An-Nisa verse 102 Allah Azza wa Jal says في كتابه الكريم And if you uh, are with them and the prayer has been established with them or oh, pray the prayer with them and then a group should establish the prayer with uh, a group from them should establish the prayer with you. So this is a all, this ayat is a is a evidence for the fear prayer as well, showing us one of the giving us the surah of how the fear prayer is performed. That some of the Muslims are on guard duty. This is during jihad, during the time of our, our great fear and fighting that a group would pray with the imam and then during the second rakah or the uh, during the uh, the second rakah I believe then they break off and another group joins the prayer and they are taking up guard duty and vice versa this is the surah of the, the, the fear prayer and so he uses this as evidence to show for ojib Allah Jama'a fi hala kital that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated the obligation for praying in Salatul Jama'a even during fighting and during fear. So how much more so when a person is in safety and comfort? And then another uh, evidence is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he he alayhi salatu wasalam ordered the blind man to pray if he hears the adhan. So how much more is it an obligation for those who see? And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of Ahli Iman and bless us with ilm al nafi wa rizqin tayyib wa amalin muttaqabbilin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.